Hello everybody, this is Gretchen Heidel. It is Monday night. It is our annual <laughs> every Monday night uh, broadcast and it is today on 1-1-1, January 11th, 2021. And so if you're just joining me, welcome. My name is Gretchen Heidel and I am a professional astrologer NLP life coach, master hypnotherapist, Reiki master, and so much more. And I'm welcoming both uh, Instagram and Facebook live. So if you're watching uh, tonight with me live, go ahead and just like my uh, post. And I would love to hear about your astrological sign and where you are tuning in from, what area of the country or world uh, that you are watching. So welcome, welcome everybody. We have a big week in astrology to talk about. I am going to be covering this week from January 11th, 2021, all the way until Sunday, January 17th. So welcome. We have a big new moon. Okay, uh, this week we have a bunch of astrological energies. So go ahead and type your type your uh, your name, also your astrological sign, where you're tuning in from. Welcome everybody. Hi Amy, <laughs> you're my first person to comment. Nobody else is commenting. So welcome Amy uh, for watching. Jacqueline, Aquarius Sun, Gemini Moon, Scorpio Rising here on Facebook. And so if you're watching here on the pre-recorded version. Welcome, or on my YouTube channel. I always post this onto my YouTube channel so you can view it first thing in the morning on Tuesday. So if you subscribe, it'll come right into your inbox. So welcome everybody. Uh, Maggie Virgo from New York. Hello. Violet Cancer here on Instagram. Welcome. Um, and Rosalie, hey, from Burlington, Vermont, and she is a Capricorn. Uh, Minor Tyler, uh, Aries uh, Sandwich. Sandwich New Hampshire. I never even knew there was a sandwich New Hampshire. So welcome. Courtney. Yay. Hey, how you doing? Taurus Sun, Moon, and Sagittarius Rising. Welcome. Lori, Cancer Rising, Aquarius from Vermont. Hey, Darlene. Miss you, girl. Welcome. So if you're watching here, I'm just waiting for a few people to join, and then I'm going to be starting the broadcast. So basically, what we have here is a bunch of astrological energy. I would say... It's hard to say, like, is this better or worse? What's happening? But this is like going to be a rough patch. We're gonna we're going into a little bit of a rough patch this week, so um, we're gonna have to have a lot of understanding of the energy. So I'm gonna uh, start talking uh, about today on Monday. Uh, we, obviously, we already got through the day, but I want to make sure that I kind of start with the with the energy. Basically, today is the end. Of like, or, or tomorrow actually, is the end of almost like one, two, three, four, five straight days of Mercury transits. So a lot of people are texting me like, is it Mercury retrograde? What is going on? There's a lot of like crazy stuff happening and there is. And we saw, well, I'm going to talk also about last week and what happened there during the storming of the Capitol, a uh, horrible mob scene situation. Um, and so we're going to talk a lot about different things. So uh, Mercury has been active now, uh, very active since Friday. Uh, for on Friday, Mercury moved into Aquarius. And then basically Friday, Mercury formed a square with Mars. Saturday the 9th, uh, Mercury formed a conjunction with Saturn. On the 10th, uh, it formed a semi-square with Neptune. Uh, on Monday the 11th, today, uh, as the time of the broadcast, Mercury formed a conjunction with Jupiter. And then tomorrow it's going to form a square with Uranus. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Mercury is not retrograde yet. Okay, so just so that you know, Mercury retrograde officially starts at the end of this month in January on uh, uh, January 30th. So that's when it officially starts. But whenever Mercury is this active, often people will text me or call me and like be like, what is going on? What is happening? Is it Mercury retrograde? It's not Mercury retrograde, but Mercury is very accurate, accurate, uh, active right now. And it's causing a lot of stuff. So you might be experiencing some electrical issues, uh, computers crashing, printers not working, you know, annoying things like that. Cell phone messages not going through. Um, today I tried to make a few calls and each time I tried to make a call, my iPhone said, call failed, call failed, call failed. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> Just 
you know, and I had to reboot it and all this kind of stupid stuff. So it's one of those types of times. So whenever Mercury is this active, remember to take care of your nervous system, okay? Especially tomorrow on Tuesday, January 12th, Mercury is going to form a square with Uranus. Now Uranus is all about the electrical of the body. So if you think of Mercury, its thoughts and its communication and and it is our nervous system where Uranus is the electrical system of the body. So if you get the nervous system, the electric system going, whoo, that can be a lot. So migraine headaches, seizures, spasms, heart palpitations, but but Overall, usually it's a very anxious, nervous energy. So that's going to peak tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern time, just so that you know where uh, Mercury will form a square. But but that's the peak, okay? So keep in mind, it's active right now, and it'll still be active uh, Wednesday and Thursday. It's just that you know how it goes. The peak, 10 a.m. tomorrow, and then Wednesday, Thursday, it starts to sort of dissipate, but it's not going to be completely gone. Hey, Brother Light, peace, welcome. Uh, we have a bunch of people joining here on Instagram Live. I love this. Um, Mary, hello, welcome. Uh, Christina, Moon and Capricorn Rising from New York, welcome. I love that we can have the dual. <laughs> hey, Colette girl, how you doing? Um, Ashley, welcome. Uh, Virgo, Sun, Libra, Moon, Leo rising. Oh, we're you and I are both Leo risings. Uh, Tara, Leo here in Burlington, Vermont. Yay. Uh, Stephanie, also from Vermont. Um, oh, and now uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Welcome. That's awesome. <laughs> so hello, everybody. Welcome that's joining me live. So we're talking about Mercury here. Mercury has been, Mercury has been very active, and I'm going to be posting tomorrow's Astro Tidbit about that. Um, and then we're going to be leading. So we have a lot of Mercury energy and then we're leading into the new moon this week. So I have a lot to say about this particular new moon because there is a lot to say about the new moon. So this particular new moon is coming overnight, Tuesday night into Wednesday. So it's exactly at midnight on, I guess exactly is, is technically Wednesday, but it's between Tuesday and Wednesday. So so it'll be midnight that night or 9 p.m. Pacific time if you're out on the West Coast, okay? So on Tuesday. So tomorrow is the new moon kind of day. So people always ask, when should I write my list? Well, you could definitely write it um, tomorrow night or on Wednesday, okay? So that's gonna be on the 13th uh, technically. But but keep in mind on Wednesday morning, by the time you wake up, the new moon, the height of it, the peak of it will be starting to release. So it's a little tricky on a weeknight, you know, if you guys are up uh, at midnight. Um, but it's gonna be in Capricorn, 23 degrees Capricorn. So what that means is the sun is in Capricorn, 23 degrees Capricorn then the moon is going to be 23 degrees Capricorn. So, oh, thank you for the hearts and the likes. I love that, everybody. And like and share, like and share, definitely. Oh, we have uh, Kate um, on uh, Instagram from Chicago. I love how everybody across, across uh, the United States here is watching Harold, New York City. Love that. Welcome. So, so that's the thing about this is that this new moon is going to be really intense in Capricorn, 23 degrees Capricorn. Well, guess what's 24 degrees Capricorn? Pluto. And so this new moon is going to be caught up with a conjunction, kind of like a triple conjunction between the sun, the moon, and then Pluto. And that's not, Pluto is not the planet we really want involved in our new moon. I mean, if you think of the most, okay, I'm going to go on the, on the light side here. Okay. I went on the light side last week and all mayhem broke out. So <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> um, so 24 degrees is Pluto. So, so what's going to happen is tomorrow, uh, or sorry, Wednesday, uh, overnight um, at midnight on the 13th is going to be the height of the new moon. And then on Thursday, the 14th is when the sun and Pluto are going to be forming its yearly annual conjunction at 919 a.m. Eastern time. So basically what the deal is, is we have a lot of stuff happening. And if you think of death, rebirth, transformation, Phoenix rising, you're talking about Pluto. And I know we always talk about here, you know, death being like 
tr a transformation and all that, but that sometimes is like the thing. And I hate to say that, but that's the energy that's kind of going on right now. There's a death of something. Um, and if you think of Capricorn, you're definitely thinking of, you know, governments and, you know, the structure and the hierarchy and the order of things. And that's basically Capricorn's wheelhouse. Okay. Productivity, goal setting and all that. So if you think about goal setting for the new year, this is a great time to do so. I'm just a little worried about this energy, especially uh, what's happening in our government right now and all different things. Um, we have a real sticky spot this week. And then next week on the day of the inauguration, which I've already told you guys last week, we, we talked about that. Um, not a good day in astrology. The, the inauguration day is a little kind of almost scary. So I'll just say that. Um, last week we saw Mars moved into Taurus and it's, I meant to print it out, but you guys probably have seen the iconic now picture of the fella that had the horns, you know, well, well, t Mars on Wednesday, on the day of the insurrection or whatever they call that, uh, the, the storming of the Capitol, um, Mars moved into Taurus. Well, that fella in that picture had horns on, literally looked like a bull. I can't even make this stuff up. Technically, the storming of our capital took place when Mars was still in Aries, and then Mar Mars switched into Taurus at 5.30 p.m., so on that day, Wednesday. Um, but we can't forget, and I even, I'll be honest with you guys, when I did my broadcast last week, I said, ah, I don't think that day is going to be too bad. I even forgot. We have to always remember, Mars is the god of war. And in the last little tiny bit of Aries, uh, Mars, the god of war, went out with a bang. And so um, that was kind of not, you know, obviously it wasn't good energy. So um, all of this is going to be change. All of this is growth. All of this is learning. All of this, uh, you know, I, I wish it didn't have to come through violence and and, you know, there could have been peaceful demonstrations and things, but it did get violent with, with Mars being activated. But we have more Mars energy this week activated, more Saturn stuff and more Pluto stuff. So this week I've told people privately, really between the 12th, 13th, and 14th, and, and the new moon is in the middle of it, which I usually, you know, you guys, I am always saying new moon, oh, you know, new beginnings and planting new seeds and it's such a beautiful thing and blah, 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 blah. This particular new moon is not. This particular new new moon is kind of like stuffed. It's, it's the nice part of a kind of like sour, stale, broken Oreo cookie. Like the, the Oreo cookie is not a good Oreo cookie. Um, so... Well, what's going to happen is Mercury is going to form a square with Uranus, like I said, on Tuesday, which is nervousness and, 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 you know, anxiety and stress and tension. Then on the day of the new moon, Mars is going to form a square with Saturn. Ugh. Venus is going to form a trine with Uranus. Uranus is more nervous energy, unexpected events, upsets, you know, kind of crazy stuff. And then on the 14th is Sun is going to form a conjunction with Pluto, death, rebirth, transformation, Phoenix rising. It's a lot. It's a lot of stuff. I mean, I wish I could give better kind of news. Um, but that's basically the deal. So I wanted to talk about Capricorn because it, all of this is taking, well, not all of it, but some of it is taking place in Capricorn here. And some of it, you know, this Mars is now in Taurus, okay? Saturn is in Aquarius, okay? But Remember, the ruler of Capricorn is in, you know, is is Saturn, so uh, which is an Aquarius, but still, it's the ruler of Capricorn. So we have a lot of Capricornian energy here. So how do we do this Capricornian energy? And hopefully, hopefully, there's not kind of um, any sort of more crazy stuff happening, but there is going to be, you know, stuff. There's stuff happening even this week. Now, I have predicted all along. If you guys have been following me for any length of time, I have been predicting that Donald Trump will not finish <laughs> his presidency. However, which way it turns out that Donald Trump would be not, not finishing. Um, I did predict that he would be impeached three quarters of the way through, which he was technically. I mean, he went up for trial for impeachment. He was not found guilty, but he was, he did find, 
he he was uh, impeached, but now he's going to be possibly impeached again. We don't know. I mean, like there's a lot of crazy stuff happening. But I have predicted that I did not think he would be finishing um, uh, his his um, I almost said a sentence. <laughs> his presidency, <laughs> his term, okay? So it's interesting because Capricorn is really, like I said, a lot of 2020 energy was associated with this Capricornian energy. 2020 was all about the COVID, all about our government, all about structures, systems, finance, all of that stuff. That's Capricorn energy. That's Capricorn's wheelhouse. Now, if we take, if we go away from the political stuff and the sort of um, universal stuff. And we look at our sort of Capricorn. Where is your Capricorn in your chart? We're going to see a lining up of the of Pluto, the sun, and the moon all together, okay, in one, in one spot there. So it depends on where Capricorn 23 slash 24 degrees Capricorn is in your chart. And that, that's how you will know on a personal level. Um, <laughs> some people on, on, uh, on Facebook here are saying that it was our sentence, <laughs> Donald Trump's presidency. Um, however you feel about that, people are laughing. <laughs> um, yeah, we can only have, I, this is what I say, laughter is the best medicine. So we can only have, uh, you know, just at least be lighthearted about it, right? Cause this is a heavy energy. And, you know, even when I was, um, you know, preparing for the broadcast today, I was, I was thinking about what I would say, because it takes a lot of time to prepare for these broadcasts, I'll just say that. Archangel Azriel uh, is the Archangel of Capricorn. So if you are Capricorn, Archangel Azriel is your Archangel, just to let you know. Um, and some people are saying, oh, my mom's on, hello. Because uh, she has a Capricorn moon, okay? So if you have Capricorn moon, Capricorn rising, I personally have Capricorn and Mars. Um, anybody that has any Capricorn in their chart, okay? Archangel Azrael is, is your, your Archangel. Archangel uh, Azrael's um, nickname, okay, is the helper of God. Also, he, he or she, I'm not sure. I think, feel like Archangels are androgynous, but that's just my personal opinion, is the angel also considered being the angel of death. And that's why on Doreen Virtue's cards, Hello from Heaven, okay, is Archangel Azrael because um, it is said that he is the archangel or she is the archangel that basically collects the soul, okay, when they pass, pass away. And so why is that associated with Capricorn? Capricorn um, is, and, and Saturn too, is associated with karma, and it could be what you did in this lifetime, could be what you experienced in a last lifetime, whatever. So it's karma. It is law and effect, okay? So um, it's it can be grief. A lot of Capricorns are, uh, not, you know, the sign itself is not considered to be the most light and fluffy sign, though I will tell you some of the most funniest people I know are Capricorns for sure. Um, <laughs> so it's one of those things that um, a lot of members of SNL, okay, Saturday Night Live, are Capricorns, okay, because I mean, they're really funny people. Um, but when we talk about Capricorn, you know, it's like sometimes people are funny out of pain. You know, Robin Williams talked about how he had ongoing problems with addiction and, de and depression, alcoholism, but he was really funny, you know? I mean, like a lot of times we use humor to deflect a little bit. So Capricorns, I feel like have that humor. Um, on Instagram, Miss Donna Lee said, I'm a Capricorn, yes, welcome. Um, yeah, I have Capricorn in my chart too. Everybody has Capricorn, by the way, in their chart. It just depends where, or if you have any planets. It, like what, when I say where, I mean what house. So when we talk about Archangel Azrael, um, Archangel Azrael is here to really comfort us in a time of transition. And if I can't think of any other time that we need Archangel Azrael is right now, because we are in a major time of transition, okay, of, of, you know, a lot of life and death stuff is happening. I mean, COVID and times of transition, you know, uh, we're talking about, um, you know, government and changing of power and, you know, maybe even in your own personal life, you're facing some transition. Maybe, maybe you're changing jobs. Maybe you're just, 
uh, changing um, friendships or changing vitamins. I don't know, whatever you're changing. But when you, when you make a change, Archangel Azrael is your um, Archangel. So the, Azrael is here to comfort us. Um, I don't know if you guys can see that card here in our time of comfort. comfort. And also is the card of the counselor here in Dorian Virtue's uh, deck. Um, um, when we think about Archangel Azrael, um, we think about, you know, maybe uh, we would need some reassurance. You know, when we think of uh, a counselor, we think of someone that can help to guide us through transition or help to guide us through a time of tragedy. Um, and though that is Archangel Azrael. Okay, so when I was thinking of Capricorn stones, um, Capricorn stones for this particular new moon, um, you know, I'm thinking about, I have a big, I'm very blessed here. I have a big hunk of garnet. Um, this thing is really heavy, actually. It's, it's a wonderful dark, 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 deep, dark red stone garnet, if you guys can see here on Facebook um, and Instagram. And so when you think of that, that's like root chakra, safety, security, all that good stuff is the garnet. And this is wonderful. I, I just love holding this thing because it's just so wonderful to like ground your energy. As well as I'm showing onyx here is wonderful Capricorn stone because it, again, that's that deep, that grounding, that protection when we think about needing safety, security, you know, and 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 for some somebody to be with us in our time of comfort or need, Archangel Azrael uh, comforting us. Um, so anybody that's dealing with grief or death, if anybody lost, I lost seven people last year in 2020 and a pet. Okay, I, which I haven't even posted about on Facebook because it was too hard for me to even deal with at uh, the holiday time. But um, unfortunately, my little rabbit uh, passed away slider. So if you're dealing with any kind of grief, loss, death, any kind of thing like that, you know, Archangel Azrael is said to be the archangel that comes and he puts his wings around us and protects us and holds us. He's associated with the color like a white creamy vanilla color. Um, just to let you know, and um, if you ever want to evoke Archangel Azrael, um, you want to uh, go ahead and um, uh, light a candle and burn a candle and say Archangel Azrael's name, um, and that will evoke the power and the energy, okay, of that particular Archangel. Somebody said here, Brother Light, Onyx not good for men, lowers male libido. I have never heard that. Um, but that's interesting. I, I have never heard of that. Um, so I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying I have never heard of it. I would say that, um, Onyx, um, uh, I have, this is protection, but it could be any black stone, really. It could be, um, black tourmaline. It could be jet. It could be, uh, hematite. Um, you guys know I love my hematite. Okay. I got my hematite. This is Onyx and this is hematite. Um, any of the dark colored stones for grounding during this Capricorn time um, is wonderful. Yes, unfortunately, Slider uh, passed away, my, my rabbit, who was 11 years old, by the way, passed away on the uh, eclipse, our, our last eclipse. Remember when I'm always talking about eclipses or endings? Oh, that was so hard. It was really hard. Um, so, yes, uh, Mary said, I'm um, sorry for your bunny. Yes, Andrea, is, it was really rough. Uh, Kristen, thank you for, for that. Um, another, I didn't bring it out with me tonight. I wasn't uh, thinking about this, but another great stone, if you are dealing with grief, loss, death, um, is actually aquamarine. Okay, that's another good one. Uh, aquamarine is a really good stone. But, but another a lighter stone because you know a lot of this is heavy energy so I wanted to also include a lighter stone this is rose quartz okay and so rose quartz is love and self-love okay because if you think about love like we gotta love ourselves through these hard times we gotta love ourselves and and send love okay to others because Right now, I feel like everybody's suffering a little bit. You know, there's like a low level kind of baseline, like behind the scenes suffering. Even when people are happy, um, 
they're calling, you know, they're even in sessions, they're going, I'm really happy. I'm doing really well, but I feel guilty, you know? And so, so when we talk about, um, you know, we got to love ourselves. Hey, if you're happy, embrace your happiness, embrace your happiness. What, let's say you're not, you're not really feeling, um, this energy on a personal level, you might just be feeling it on a collective level because again, this is all heavy stuff. And if you turn on the news or if you're like me and you have an iPhone, you know, you get those little uh, news alerts that come up. Oh, this one just happened and this thing just happened. And it's like a lot on the psyche. And if you're an empath, if you're an HSP, highly sensitive person, if you're a Capricorn, this is all up in your Capricorn, you know, you want to have some love and self-love. I mean, that's really a good uh, way of looking at it. So um, you guys are sending all these condolences. Thank you so much. Monica said, would black volcanic rock be grounding? Oh, yes, absolutely. Another one that I like is Shungite. Um, it and smoky quartz, which I didn't have examples uh, to show you guys tonight, but those are good ones too. Um, oh, thank you, my um, somebody said I look lovely in my shirt. Sorry to hear about my bunny. Uh, yeah, it was really rough. He was 11 and um, he was very special to me. I haven't, I haven't really quite spoken about him, but um, but I've had also seven people uh pass away. Um, as well. And I know a lot of people right now because a lot of people are transitioning. Um, you know, with COVID, we have almost 2 million deaths so far worldwide of COVID. And you think about all the transitioning. So even though this is a new moon, new moon is all about planting new seeds and harvesting new things and, and writing out your new moon manifestation list. We also have a little bit of like endings coming with it as well because we can't move on to the new thing until the old thing kind of dies off or is finished or whatever um and so Kristen said yes smoky quartz absorbs um <laughs> yes uh, people are saying shungite they wear it daily oh no worries lauren thank you for your condolences of my bunny yeah he was a good boy uh dodie said i'm so sorry hi dodie i haven't seen you in a while um, and so basically that's the thing. And somebody put, uh, brother light, um, put, uh, fourth chakra. Yes. Uh, for the, for the, um, rose quartz, that's a heart chakra. Okay. Um, because it's pink and so love and self love, we need some self love. I feel like we need some nurturing and some compassion. And when we think of comfort, oh my God, we need comfort right now. Like a big bowl of like some hot brothy soup and a blankie and you know, someone to snuggle with. That's, you know, <laughs> your cat or your dog or your honey or your loved one or whatever. Um, uh, big fuzzy slippers too. I think that's a good one. So, so what will happen on this new moon? So I want you to write out your new moon manifestation list. Okay. So, um, I would write it all out again, leaving the how these things come to you off of the list. Okay. You want to write all of the different points. Um, you want to be abundant. You want to attract love. Uh, you want to have good health and prosperity, whatever thing it is. This is wonderful for goal setting. So if we just, if it was just a stripped down, Capricorn new moon, I wouldn't be kind of talking in, in such a tone that I'm taking with this particular new moon. If this was just a new moon, I would be like, yeah, let's go for goals, set some goals and make a plan and, and do your new year's resolutions and all that good stuff. Um, it's just that this particular Capricorn new moon is a little heavier. So Mars is going to form a square with Saturn. Now there's been three squares with Saturn, Mars square Saturn. Okay. Since August, October, and now this month, this is the final square of, of Mars and Saturn. I'm done. <laughs> I think we need to be over that. All right. So Mars is, as you know, in Taurus, that's going to happen at 6 2 AM on Wednesday. So tomorrow we're going to feel this energy. Uh, because remember, when we talk about this is peaking on Wednesday morning at 6.02 a.m., we're going to feel it all day on Tuesday. So Mars is the god of war. We can't forget that because even I forgot that last week as the astrologer that Mars was the god of war. Um, and, you know, because when I think of when I think of like terrorist activity and stuff, I definitely think of Pluto, which is the more modern astrology version. But remember, the Greeks 
okay, back in the day, before they had telescopes, they didn't know about Pluto. So Mars would be the naughty one. Mars would be the one that was misbehaving and causing uprisings and upheaval and all that kind of stuff. And so we can never forget that. Um, my, I'm going to give a one of the my friends that passed away last year, John, I'm going to give him a shout out um, because he and I would have these little fun debates. Uh, John was a, a Virgo. I don't know if Darlene is still on the broadcast, but maybe she knows. Ugh, but he, he and I would have a little healthy debate about basically, because he was an astrologer, about if uh, he would, his belief was that if you couldn't see it with your naked eye, it didn't exist. Um, because that's what the Greeks believed. Okay, so before uh, telescopes were, were, you know, invented, Basically, you would look at the sky and that's what they saw. That's what astrologers uh, basically based all of their astrology off of. So uh, planets like Uranus, planets like Pluto. I'm short, I think I'm shorting out the, uh, <laughs> the broadcast here on Facebook because I feel like it's glitchy um, with my energy. But I'm saying a shout out to, to my friend John. Um, so basically he, uh, would, would always say that, that, um, it didn't count. So we had a little healthy debate and it was, it was a fun debate. Okay. Just to let you know, we had a, a healthy, fun debate all about Pluto and if Pluto really had an effect on our planet, which I believe it does immensely. And John did not, he would, he would have said Mars was the big troublemaker, but he was right last week. Mars was the big troublemaker. So, um, that's basically what the deal is, but, oh, we have a lot of, a lot of planetary stuff. So basically we have Mars square, uh, Saturn on Wednesday. Okay. The 13th. Then we have Venus, uh, forming a trine with Uranus. Now Uranus, okay. Is basically, um, oh, I'll get to your question in a second, Andrea. Um, Uranus is basically going to be active because on Tuesday, Mercury is forming a square with Uranus. And then on Wednesday, Venus is going to form a trine with Uranus. So what does that mean? It's going to be talking, Mercury. Venus is love and relationships. So now, now it's affecting our love and relationship zone. So it's almost like what area is not affected? <laughs> By all this energy, I mean, we have Mercury, thinking, talking, communicating, and travel. We can't forget Mercury's travel, even though we're we're not really doing a lot of traveling. Okay, and then we have Uranus, uh, which is sudden upsets. We might even hear of an earthquake, okay, um, uh, a big earthquake uh, around this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and then we have Mars, the god of war. Then we have Saturn, government system structures. Then we have Pluto death, rebirth, transformation, and then we have Venus, which is our love lives. It's everything but the kitchen sink. <laughs> so people might want to know, well, how is this going to affect me? It could be kind of any of those things. Um, uh, so what areas specifically astrologically? Well, when we look at Saturn, it, we're looking at the West Coast, okay, of the United States. So and, and by the way, Saturn lines go through other countries and other areas too, but I don't have the map in front of me, but basically Saturn's definitely in the West Coast. So, so yeah, uh, California, Oregon, somebody on here was, uh, I think Jeanette was tuning in from Oregon, uh, Seattle, Washington, whatever, West Coast, even Vancouver, um, up uh, in Canada um, is going to be affected in that way, but then Mars line goes through the east coast so when we look at saturn and then we look at oh there was a couple earthquakes today see i didn't even read the news today mary said there was a couple earthquakes today over six uh in magnitude yeah so yeah that would be that would be definitely i didn't even have to look at the news i can just tell you from astrology that there's gonna be earthquakes maybe um it was interesting the day that uh when when some of this uranus activity kind of started acting up um uh, the the uh, volcano in Hawaii started to bubble up again, um, and that has been very closely tied with with things. So that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, so everybody's going to be feeling this, but especially Capricorns, especially all of the cardinal signs. Okay, so uh, Capricorn, Cancer. Aries, Libra, okay, all of the cardinal signs are going to definitely be feeling this. If you have 
other earth signs in your chart. So if you're a Taurus or Virgo, you're going to be feeling this. Um, Venus uh, is in Capricorn, Mercury is in Aquarius, so Aquarians are going to be feeling this energy too. I mean, there's just so much involved with it. I think we're all going to feel it, really. Um, but but there's that. So <laughs> it's a lot of a lot of big days. And then the 15th and 16th, Friday, Saturday, is actually going to be quiet. <sighs> Amen, hallelujah. Except on Sunday. Jupiter is going to form a square with Uranus. Okay, so what does that mean? Jupiter is good luck, good fortune, optimism, expansion in Aquarius is going to form a square with Uranus on Sunday. The height of that's going to be 5.50 p.m. Sunday, but I'm going to tell you what, it's going to be active all week. Okay, just to let you guys know. Uh, hey, Cynthia, uh, what is what is a Pisces to do, she said. <laughs> Well, luckily, Pisces is not one of the ones that's in the direct line of fire here um, when it comes to the uh, planets. But um, <laughs> Donna said, oh, what is a triple Libra to do? Yeah, that's going to be up in your area, uh, Donna, for sure, because Libra is one of the cardinal signs. So, um, but this Jupiter square Uranus is going to take place on, Mon on sorry, Sunday, the 17th, 5.50 p.m. Eastern time is the peak of it. But this one is one of those the outer planets are involved, so we are definitely going to be feeling this all week, but that's the height of it is on Sunday. Jupiter's good luck, good fortune, expansion, optimism, Uranus' shakeups, unexpected events, natural disasters, earthquakes, and when you couple Uranus with, with Jupiter, you get uh, Jupiter enhances and makes whatever it touches bigger. Okay, so even though Jupiter is a good planet, a very um, uh, like sort of beneficial planet in our charts, Jupiter is your good luck and your good fortune. It still is right up on Uranus. This can be also a time of like sort of big religious beliefs. It's beliefs, and so someone might come in and question our beliefs, and there might be some of this like. You know, I mean, we have a lot of belief stuff going on right now in our government um, as far as what's right, what's wrong, who's in charge, da, 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 like all of this stuff with beliefs. So so we definitely have that is going to be activated on Sunday and it'll be active even next week as we get into Monday, which is Martin Luther King Day. And then we have that inauguration day coming, um, which that's when Mars is going to form a conjunction with Uranus and Uranus is explosions. It's fires. I mean, oh, my God on the inauguration day. So I am saying a prayer that, that, um, everybody's safe and, and, uh, good on, on the inauguration day, because that's going to be, and that's another quarter lunar cycle day, which is what happened. So on the sixth, on last Wednesday, when we were talking about, um, what happened with the, with the storming of the Capitol and the mob scene and everything else, the angry, uh, lynching mob, mob people, uh, we had a, we had a, quarter lunar cycle and then we had Mars moved into Taurus and Taurus is the bull so remember bulls can gore people I mean like you know that's hardcore then we have the second quarter lunar cycle in Taurus which is the bull and then we have um Mars is going to form a conjunction with Uranus on inauguration day that's going to be on the 20th so uh, we have a lot coming. The you know these next few weeks, there's a lot kind of astrologically happening. Now I know I said this year is going to be a, a bit better, but remember I never said it was going to be easy. Never, never did I say it would be easy. Just just a little better. So I want to. Um, oh, I I didn't finish the new moon thing. So I basically I want you guys to write out your new moon manifestation list. I want you to write out the how, not not the how, but I'm going to leave the how off the list, write all of the things you would like, fold it up, put it underneath your pillow, and then in two weeks on the full moon, which is going to be on the 28th, it, you're going to burn or destroy the list, okay? Um, uh, be prepared with supplies, okay, yeah, I mean, I guess, the uh, supplies, uh, communication might break down. Yeah, I mean, communication, that, that is definitely a thing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and Andrea, and I'm not sure if you heard earlier, because we were talking about, we were definitely talking about um, uh, the Mercury retrograde is going to be coming. So we have people here 
uh, commenting on Facebook or Instagram, but definitely if you guys have any questions for me tonight, go ahead and post below and I will be answering a few selected, whatever the angels or spirit guides guide me to, to, um, to do. Uh, but I will be pulling some Dorian Virtue cards. Whoops. Sorry about that. That's weird. I'm plugged in and I wonder why. Um, let me see. I, I lost power on my uh, on my iPhone, and I'm not sure I'm not sure why that's happening. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, so uh, go ahead and write down if anybody has any questions for me tonight. Uh, we have 43 people, actually 44 people live here on Facebook, and 10 people live here on Instagram. So go ahead and post below if you would like to ask a question. Um, I'll be pulling a few cards. Uh, Oh, Maggie, your grandma visited last night in a dream if there was a message from your grandma. So let's go ahead and pull a card. We got a lot of spirit activity tonight. I feel I feel spirit is with us. I just, I don't know. There's something going on with spirit. I can feel it. Um, we are definitely, uh, Archangel Azrael is definitely helping us through. Uh, times of transition, times of transition. Okay, so I'm going to uh, pull a card really quickly for Maggie. Maggie, what, do you, what does your grandma need you to know? Um, her message or her from the dream last night. What does grandma need you to know? Mm, angel therapy. Angels. <laughs> Archangel Raphael, give your cares and worries to the angels and allow us to take your burdens. So Maggie... Um, Grandma, I feel like, was there to comfort and to help you, basically, um, to let you know that whatever it is that you're stressed about, thinking about, worried about, that everything's going to be fine. Give your cares and worries over to the angel. Angel therapy, basically, is all about that. Um, and release your worries. It's kind of like a let go and let God kind of a card. Um, so I hope that that helps. Um, I do feel that that was your grandma, but I feel like basically it was almost like a hug. Like she was trying to like, let you know that you would be okay. So, um, I feel like, I feel like you're worried about something, uh, coming up, but I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like it's, I don't feel like it, it's uh, a founded worry, I guess, if you, if you, um, uh, understand that. So I hope that helps Maggie. Uh, Somebody else here on Instagram said, can you tell me if you're going to change schools next year? Okay, so I'm going to look at, we're going to pull a card for, for Blonde Ambition Violet. <laughs> I love that name. <laughs> All right. Blonde Ambition Violet wants to know if she's changing schools next year. Are you going to change schools? I'm changing cards, by the way. Actually, I, I, I'm getting the card Have Faith. Okay, this is the hat card Have Faith. Um, funny because the same, it's a similar message of the last card, different decks of let go and let God kind of a thing. Um, but uh, Blonde Ambition, I feel like, I feel like um, there's a lot of anxiety coming up around this, uh, around this reading and around, the, you got a lot of stress and pressure cards, girl. It's like a lot of stress and pressure. I feel like, I feel like you gotta, and it's funny, I said this in the last broadcast, you gotta not focus on what you don't want. Focus instead on what you do want. I do see you going to potentially a different school, different location, okay, Blonde Ambition. So just to let you know, this is the moving card or the travel card or relocating card. But in this context, it was Am I going to a different school? So you could if you wanted to. Um, but what I'm saying is there's a lot of stress and pressure and anxiety. Like you got all my stress and pressure cards, like every one of them around this. So um, listen, this, I cannot stress to enough. This week in particular is hardcore, super stress week. Okay. Even if you're not like have, have anything truly to stress about. We'll find something. Okay, this is kind of like the <laughs> the week that we're about to have here. So, and I'm not laughing because I just am laughing because like these planets are ridiculous right now. Really, really, really ridiculous. So, whew. all right. So we're gonna we're gonna keep going here. Let's see. I'm missing some of these. 
Oh, Rosalie, I'm so sorry about your grandmother, Rosalie's passing. Um, uh, Blonde Ambition, if you could let me know if that resonated with you on Instagram here, that would be great. I'm having trouble reading some of these. Ah, Lori, a card to help you. A card to help you build your business. Welcome new consultants looking for wine lovers. Hey, if anybody wants to, to apply for a job uh, on, on Facebook here, wine lovers, um, Lori is your girl, okay? She's looking for people to help her. And you will you will build your business, girl. No problems. Uh, Jackie, could you share what the energy behind an adoption feels like? Yes, Jackie. Let's do a card for Jackie here on Facebook. Uh, Kate wanted to know how will Scorpios be affected with the new moon? Well, technically Scorpios and Capricorns are best friends. Okay. Um, that's water and earth signs. However, however, um, uh, it's definitely something that, um, uh, this particular new moon is going to be stressful for all, especially with Uranus being involved. Uranus is in Taurus, which opposes Scorpio. Okay. So that could be the stressful part of it where everybody's feeling anxiety. That's the, basically Uranus is the card of anxiety. When I look at my cards here. Okay, Jackie, I'm going to pull a card for you with your adoption. If you are still on Facebook, go ahead and comment. Um, how does it feel? Uh, yeah, I mean, it feels good. I don't know if you have to do contracts. I don't know. I, I don't know if this is a child or a pet or a pet that feels like a child, but I feel like it's almost like we have to do a background check. We have to run, you know, call the veterinarian and get records or <laughs> your pediatrician to get records. I don't know, but, um, it feels like, it feels like, I don't know. I kind of feel like it might be a pet, but, um, it feels good. This feels good. This adoption. I, I like that. Oh, this is, Love, 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 love. Um, so Jackie, you're getting the card of talking, communicating, writing, emailing, texting. Okay, so we're talking about the adoption. Those are also contracts, just to let you know. Try, try, try again and you will succeed because you maybe tried a different adoption and it fell through. So, but this one is try, try, try again and you will succeed. And then this is love, uh, the card of love, Jackie. So you're getting good cards on the adoption, okay, that I, I do feel like it's going to end up going through. So, uh, Jackie, if you're still on, hopefully let you know. Yes, happy birthday, Gretchen. Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday. Yeah, I mean, everybody's having anxiety right now. Everybody's posting stuff. Sarah said, Sarah, hi, Sarah. Um, going back to school, being around certain people. Okay. I don't have any other, let me see. Oh, Blonde said, thank you so much. And yes, uh, you have a lot of stress around this decision. Uh, Blonde, uh, ambition here on, on Instagram. I was curious to see, are you, um, going to be going to a different, okay, a different, uh, school in a different location, uh, because if so, I would say absolutely yes, that's that's what you should be doing. So just, you kind of have to jump in both feet and just, just like make the decision and commit, okay? I hope that helps. Sarah! <laughs> oh, Jackie, I'm sorry, broadcast is skipping and repeating. Oh, um, it looks good on my end. I don't know if other people can see. Um, and said everything I said was staggering. Oh, good, 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 good. Hopefully in a good way. All right, so Sarah, I wanna just pull really quickly. Um, I wanna pull really quickly. A card for you, Sarah, about, about going back to school and being around certain people. Oh, Sarah, you got Archangel Azrael. Okay, which is the card of comfort. I'll read it for you, Sarah. Um, I am with you in your time of need, helping your heart to heal. Okay, I would not worry about school, especially with Archangel Azrael, because I, that's this Archangel is a badass. Okay, just letting you know. And this is the Archangel we were just talking about, which is which is in charge of 
uh, Capricorn. So if you are Capricorn, Archangel Azrael is your is your Archangel. But remember, we can all access Archangel Azrael. We can we can all do that. Okay. Um, oh, good, Jackie. Thank you. You'll you'll check in when it's posted later. I can't wait to see your new baby. <laughs> David, hello, welcome. If you're new to this broadcast, he's an Aries. Welcome, David. I am an Aries also. Oh, I'm going to pull a card really quick for Jane Moonwolf, and then I'm going to pull a collective card for everyone who is watching this broadcast, uh, either live, pre-recorded. And guys, make sure that you go ahead, like and share, like and share, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, but also YouTube because I'm going to be firing up some some stuff that you can only see on YouTube. So I want you to make sure you don't miss it. So when you subscribe on my YouTube channel under Gretchen Heidel, and then and then make sure you click the bell notification thing so that you know when I'm on. Okay, Jane Moon Wolf, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a card for you. Um, <laughs> you're oh I'm sorry you're still in the middle of legal the legal thing. Okay. All right, we'll pull a card for your legal, your legal stuff. Okay, you're welcome, Sarah and Andrea. Put all these hearts, yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, we're gonna do uh, a really quick, cool uh, card for Jane Moonwolf. I, I'm being told to switch cards, so I always listen when my spirit guides tell me things. Okay, I'm pulling one quick card for Jane Moonwolf. Oh, you got the best card. Just so that you guys know, I, this is my favorite card out of my deck. And I have a special deck that is um, discontinued that is by Linda Goodman. Star cards, okay. And, oh, I got a notification that somebody just subscribed to YouTube. Thank you, thank you. Magician, okay, is also in the tarot deck. And Jane Moonwolf about your legal legal stuff. You got the magician, and and this is a wonderful card. If you ever get this, if you, in your tarot deck, if you guys have, do you guys have decks that you play with at home? Um, but if you do, magician means that you have everything you need. You just need to do it. Okay, so if I told you to build a shelf, it would mean you had the hammer, the wood, the the glue, the nails. All you have to do is put the shelf together and then hang it up on the wall. Okay, so just to let you know, magician card okay about your legal stuff girl this is the card girl you got this oops that was neptune <laughs> um girl you got this okay so just make sure neptune came out i look i always say there's no accidents i accidentally grabbed they were on top of each other but neptune came out on top of that which means you might be facing lies okay remember uh someone might be lying okay which we i think we jane moon i think we know who that is right so but you got this. Don't worry. Don't worry. You got this. Even if there is lies, don't worry. <laughs> That's the big message for tonight. Okay. Big message for tonight is we're going to have lots of anxiety this week. Okay. So we need to ground, ground, ground. <sighs> Breathe. Okay. Breathe and ground. Okay. We're going to use our dark colored stones, our onyx, our, our, our uh, garnet. We use dark colored stones and we will ground and be be in our in our body okay all right so i'm gonna pull one card a collective card okay for everybody uh, that's watching here tonight or on the pre-recorded on my youtube what do you guys need to know about this particular new moon what's the most helpful information that our spirit guides our guardian angels want us to know for this week, for this new moon, what do we need to know? What's the most important card? What do we need to know? Oh, never fails, does it, guys? Never fails. Archangel Azrael. <laughs> and I swear to you, I have 78 cards that are all different in here. And basically, that's Archangel Azrael, okay? Hello from heaven. I even felt that tonight when my friend John came in and overwhelmed me a little bit. Hello from heaven, okay? Um, hello from heaven is Archangel Azrael. Your loved ones in heaven are doing fine. Let go of worries and feel their loving blessings. So if you lost a loved one, an animal, a person, okay, in this, in this last year, 
especially that you know we had a lot of we had a lot of death and we had a lot of uh, souls transitioning um, hello from heaven is all about that your loved one is always right on the other side okay of the veil um, your loved one you know it's harder it's almost like a one-way mirror you know they can see you but you can't see them as easily Okay, and so that's basically what the what the message is here. Hello from heaven is all about that. Okay, uh, your loved one is always with you, always watching over you, your spirit guides, your guardian angels, but also your deceased loved ones, which is what I call spirit. And spirit is always with us, even though I have seven people that I lost and and my and my my pet rabbit, you know, and many many other people and many other animals that I've lost in my life. Um, they're with me and they become part of our spirit team. Okay. So I hope that that helps just know from Archangel Azrael, he, that he was really present tonight. Uh, he, she very present tonight in our session and in our, uh, wonderful broadcast here. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Um, and, uh, just remember everybody in this world right now is struggling a bit. So hang in there. Um, and remember that your loved ones are with you and remember that you have peace in your heart and they have peace. Okay. When they're on the other side, they do have peace. So I hope that that helps. If you want to have a personalized astrological session with me, go ahead and send me a DM or a text message on my phone. Much gratitude. Make sure you do have gratitude by the way, cause that helps, that helps to remind us that we are blessed. Okay. Have a wonderful evening. Namaste. Peace, love, and light to everyone. Bye.